Hello friends! Today we will implement the internal pattern scanner. We will face some issues and learn how to overcome them. We will then use the scanner to obtain the character base pointer. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge! That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for reasoned attacks. Alright, if you have seen my video Pattern Scanning in C++, you already know the basics. If you have not, I recommend doing so. We will start with that code and change it so that it works within our DLL. Since we are in the virtual space of our target, we can directly access its memory. We do not need the process base address anymore, because we operate from within the process, meaning we are in its virtual address space. Instead, we need to know the minimum and maximum address our target uses within its address space. To get this information, we use the getSystemInfo function. Inside the nested loop, instead of going through a buffer, we directly access the bytes of our target by casting the pointer to a byte pointer and then reading the byte value stored at that address. To test this function, we of course need some pattern to scan for. So let's start Terraria and attach cheat engine. In memory view, let's enumerate DLLs and symbols to find the target function. After looking around for a bit, we find a very promising function called getLocalPlayer. Looking into this function, it seems like the player base address is calculated and then stored into EAX. Those pointers which are accessed to move values into EAX and EDX are probably not static, so we cannot use them in our pattern, but everything else should work fine. So let's grab that signature and change the bytes to minus one where they probably won't be static. If you don't find a specific pattern with your scanner, it's worth checking if the pattern changed in memory. This happened to me as well. Back in Visual Studio, let's add a new option to our UI. If we press numpad1, we call our new function with the signature we just found. To check if our scanner works, let's output the current address which is being scanned. Now let's build our DLL and inject it. After starting the function, we instantly produce a crash while trying to read the first address. Apparently we tried to read from an address we cannot read from. To figure out if we can or cannot read from an address, we can use the virtual query function, which gives us memory basic information. Memory basic information contains a lot of information, including state and protect. Looking at the possible values for these bits of information, we can see that the state should probably be memcommit and protect should probably not be page guard, page no cage or page no access. For more information, I highly recommend reading the documentation. Now back in Visual Studio, let's implement what we just learned. With bitwise and as well as or, we can check if protect is one of the values I just mentioned. Let's build once again and inject. Okay, now we don't get an error anymore. Yay! And our scanner is scanning. And scanning. And still scanning. Let's see what's the function address we are looking for. This is problem. With this scanning speed, we would take a long time to find the location of the function. Let's abort this never-ending scan and brainstorm some possible improvements. First of all, outputting every single address to console takes a lot of time, so let's remove that for now. On top of that, memory basic information also contains the value region size. 
If we check at some address within some region, if that region has accessible memory, and it turns out that no, we cannot read within this region, we should not check within that same region again. To achieve this, all we have to do is increase our index by the region size. At the same time, if we check a region and it turns out that we can't scan this region, we should not check again at any other location within that region, but instead just scan it. We can do this by adding yet another for loop, which goes through that region and afterwards updates our main index to the first address after the region. Okay, rebuild and try again. <sighs> While these improvements do help, we are still way too slow. Therefore, let's add optional parameters to our scanner function, where we can define start and end address to scan within. This is of course trial and error, because we cannot be certain that our function will be loaded within some specific range. There seem to be two regions where the function is most likely stored, and if that is not the case, we can still scan all the memory. Rebuild and try again. Okay, now that's way better and we even get a result. Let's see if the address our scanner found is correct. Yep, it works. That was the hard part. Next time we will use this scanner to find and manipulate all sorts of things. Please do give me some feedback. Consider subscribing if you would like to see more like this. Until next time friends, talk to you soon.